Do you guys remember what it feels like to be immersed in the rich lore and atmosphere of a Magic the Gathering block? You had time to bask in the fantastical environment when there were a few sets that visited a plane instead of one and done. Lorewin was initially released in 2007. Lots of you were just babies back then, just little cherubs in the early 2000s, right? Due to my extremely long life as a member of the Fungus family, I was 84 years old when this set released. I wish I started doing YouTube back then, but I got a head start in the next 84 years. So listen, subscribe, and I'll share my spores with you. So listen man, this was a four set block, and that structure gave us time to steep in the lore like a fine tea. No humans in this block, just elves and changelings, merfolk, lots of other stuff, fairies. These blocks were heavily centered in their cycles. We had anthems, lands, demigods, commands, and I want to revisit some key cards and just marvel at the art and indulge in a little nostalgia for a little bit. I also want to take a look at whether some of these cards are good anymore. Evaluate the nostalgia through the lens of modern commander. Now these were the sets that initially gave us the reflection cycle, with mana reflection being the priciest, doubling the mana you produce when you tap a permanent. Any permanent dude works for any permanent. Features some Paris Hilton looking elves on the art there. And then you got wound reflection, right? It's another excellent card I've used in slug decks. Got a bit pricey since it's reprint and double masters, but look at these two guys giving each other hernias as represented by this unhappy knot face in the pelvic region. Now the other three of these have their places in certain decks but are bulk price cards. The art features some of the tribes rampant on Shadowmoor. The art on Boon Reflection especially is pretty awesome dude. It's just the odd couple, couple Kithkin just cooking up some chowder dude. Now these sets also birthed an incredibly sought after and expensive cycle of filter lands. Some are pricier than others due to odd reprints here and there. They were reprinted in Double Masters as well. These lands can produce colorless mana or filter a hybrid mana into any combination of those two colors that it represents. In all my years of playing Commander, I've never run into a situation where these are useless. I use them heavily. Having access to this level of color fixing is great in two and three color decks. The nostalgia on these things hits so hard, dude, and the artists went to great lengths to set the stage for the set. Many of the arts include creatures from Lorwyn and give the creatures a place to hang out, dude. Look at the dang mystic gate, brother. You got this little fella just passing through there, gorgeous. Now one of the best cycles to come out of this block was these weird hybrid liege creatures. You got the old Creekwood over here, dude. He's one and a three hybrid black green for a creature horror, it's a two-two. Other black creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Other green creatures you control get plus one, plus one. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may create a 1-1 one, one black and green worm creature token. So you have an anthem that hits both colors and some little bonus effect. Some of these were better than others. And listen, if you have a creature that's both colors, it gets both bonuses, all right? That's from the rulings. Don't argue with me about it, dude. Now this guy is my favorite, the Deathbringer Liege. And listen, I don't know what's going on in this art, dude, but I know that this guy likes meatballs. And it's two and uh, three hybrid white black for a creature. It's a whore, it's a three, four. Other white creatures get plus one, plus one. Other black creatures control get plus one, plus one. Whenever you cast a white spell, you may tap target creature. Whenever you cast a black spell, you may destroy target creature if it's tapped. If you cast a spell that's both white and black, you just stack the trigger so that you can tap it and then kill the dang thing. Dude, that's from the rulings as well. This guy got inexplicably new, even weirder art in Double Masters. Just some little creep hawking strawberries from behind a tree, I guess. I prefer the older art with the guy just eating meatballs. And you got the old Merc Fiend Liege. It's two and three hybrid green and blue mana for a creature horror. It's a four, four. Other green creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Other blue creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Untap all green and or blue creatures you control during each other player's untap step. I use this in a couple decks. In a Londo or any deck where the commander taps for an activated ability. The art on this is wild, dude. Looks like that Dark Souls boss from Dark Souls 2, dude. He's just drowning the ashen ones in the dang pond, buddy. Oh, look at the old mind racker up there, dude. He's three and three hybrid blue and red for a creature horror. It's a four, four. Other blue creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Other red creatures you control get plus one, plus one. As a bunch of hybrid mana, you may put a blue or red creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. This guy's just terrorizing some cottage dwellers in the night, dude. This is an interesting card and it is a creature based deck, which you don't see very often. Now the rest of this liege cycle is a little less interesting, but the art is still fantastic. Dude, listen, check them out if you're running a two color commander that needs that buff. Now the real meat of this video is in the demigods of Lorwyn and Shadowmoor. When I first started playing commander, these were pretty sought after cards. Each comes with a signature enchantment aura, some of which are pretty bonkers, so let's dive in. 
You got the old Gas Lord of Fugue. This guy's five hybrid Demir mana for a creature spirit avatar. It's a 4-4. Four, four. This guy cannot be blocked. Whenever Gas Lord of Fugue deals combat damage to a player, that player reveals their hand. You choose a card from it. That player exiles that card. Now, the whole thing with these guys is that they make appearances in the Seer's Parables and this uh, poem, massive poem that they did. So this guy, he's a ghost that's never known life. It makes sense, right? It's pretty bonkers ability. None of these are legendary, so if you wanted, you could neuter everybody at the table if you cloned it. Gave it myriad somehow. I love the flavor on this guy. Just a straight specter out there. It looks like he's washing his ghost hands on a mountain, dude. I think that's what it is. Anyway, a fugue state is when you go walking around and you have no memory of what you're doing, which is basically the last 25 years of my life. And this guy gives other little creatures his helm, dude. It's three and a hybrid Demir for enchantment aura. Enchant creature. As long as enchanted creature is blue, it gets plus one, plus one. It has whenever this creature deals damage to an opponent, draw a card. And as long as the creature's black, it gets plus one, plus one. It has whenever this creature deals damage to opponent, that player discards a card. This guy's just a murloc rocking the ghost helm, dude. The merfolk of this world, they don't look like mermaids or happy little dudes like that. They look like dang murlocs from World of Warcraft. So this guy on an evasive commander, this enchantment can put in some incredible work. Trying to read these mana values is killing me, dude. I had to redo this video like eight freaking times. So this is the Godhead Awe, which is five hybrid Azorius. For a creature spirit avatar, it's a 4-4 with flying. Other creatures have base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. That's all the other creatures, dude. What she saw crawling upon this world repulsed her, yet she could not tear her gaze away. I didn't notice those tentacles on your face in your profile pictures. You try to go out with this lady, it's like she put some filter on there and then you go go meet her at the restaurant. Dude, she got tentacles on her face. The very definition of a catfish. This can be crazy in a deck where you have anthems and counter synergies or where you don't rely on combat at all. If you're trying to combo out an Azorius and just neuter everybody else's combat strats, you're good, dude. And the signature enchantment is the Steel of the Godhead. It's just a little guy carrying a sword. It's two and a hybrid Azorius for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. As long as creature's white, it gets plus one, plus one, has lifelink. As long as it's blue, it gets plus one, plus one, can't be blocked, dude. Pretty decent in aura deck to force through damage. This little guy's been training MMA. He's punching above his weight class. And we got the over being of myth. So this is five hybrid green blue for a creature spirit avatar. Power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card, dude. That's pretty cool. She walks among us unseen, learning from our imperfections. So, oh shoot, Simic is drawing cards again. This has been outclassed in recent years, but it's still a pretty dope card. She got a couple owls on her head, dude. And that's pretty nice. That's a nice lady. Now, Favor of the Overbeing, pretty interesting card. It's one in a hybrid green-blue for an enchantment aura. So as long as enchanted creature is green, it gets that plus one, plus one, and has vigilance. As long as it's blue, it gets plus one, plus one, and has flying, dude. This is pretty cool, I guess. Two mana for plus two, plus two, vigilance and flying for a uh, two-color commander. Very efficient in a budget auras deck. Then we have Divinity of Pride. So it's five hybrid Orzov for a creature spirit avatar. It's a 4-4 with flying and lifelink. So this thing gets plus four, plus four, as long as you have 25 or more life. She spoke of mystery and portent of such unfathomable things that my mind screamed for pity. Not bad in a life gain deck, dude. I had this in Alora forever. It starts as an 8-8 with flying and lifelink and commander. It's kind of hard to cast in a three color deck though. And this thing is rocking the edge of divinity, dude. It's one hybrid Orzov for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, as long as enchanted creature is white, it gets plus one, plus two. As long as it's black, it gets plus two, plus one. Jabus, plus three, plus three for one hybrid mana, dude. This is efficient. And that little goblin looks like she's having the time of her life swanging that thing around. And over in this corner, we got the Oversoul of Dusk. So this is five hybrid green-white for a creature. Spirit Avatar, it's a 5-5. Five five. Has protection from blue, from black, and from red. Some say she hid the sun herself. A desperate act to save it from its ultimate extinction, dude. That's something you don't want to get into. You never want to get into an ultimate extinction match with a professional wrestler, brother. So this card is fairly vanilla. But that art's crazy, dude. Look at that. Take a minute and figure out that situation, brother. Oh, hang on, dude. There's an enchantment to go along with this Oversoul. You got the old shield over here, dude. It's two and a hybrid green-white for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. As long as it's green, it gets plus one, plus one, and has indestructible, dude. As long as it's white, it gets plus one, plus one, and has flying. This is a fairly useful aura. So this is three mana for plus one, 
plus one and plus one plus one and it gets indestructible and flying dude protection and evasion and a decent pump for three mana so this is great in a budget aura deck and it's smack it enchanter's colors as well i've used this several times check out this monster dude we got the deity of scars it's five hybrid black green for a creature spirit avatar it's a seven seven with tramp stamps deity scars enters the battlefield with two minus one minus one counters on it has one black and a green remove a minus one minus one and regenerate this guy his skin cuts swords dude so what ever see my skin dude it cuts pineapples brother i don't know about this guy seems not that great and his enchantment, the gift of the deity, is four and a hybrid black green for an enchant creature. As long as it's black, it gets plus one, plus one, has death touch. As long as it's green, it gets plus one, plus one, has a lure effect. All creatures able to block it do so. Oh snap, brother, another murloc swinging stuff around. This can be a real blowout if you have a big beefy creature to slap this on. There's a bunch of decks that want death touch and lure. Kind of pricey though, dude. It's five mana. Deity's getting the shaft in this cycle, I gotta say. Oh man, now we got a really sweet one, the Demigod of Revenge, dude. So this is five, a hybrid black and red for a creature spirit avatar. It's a five four, has flying and haste. When you cast the spell, return all cards named Demigod of Revenge from your graveyard to the battlefield. Oh well, it's not gonna happen in Commander, dude. His laugh, a bellowing, deathly din, slices through the heavens, making them bleed. The heck is going on with that, dude? This is not great in Commander, my friends, but at least it's kind of cool looking. Now his enchantment is Fists of the Demigod, which is kind of ironic because the dude doesn't even have hands in his own art. It's one in a hybrid black red for an enchantment aura and chain creature. As long as it's black, it gets plus one, plus one and has Wither. As long as it's red, it gets plus one, plus one and has First Strike. This is cheap and makes the enchanted creature very hard to block, especially if the creature it's attached to is large. Kind of a cool enchantment. I've never used it before, but I could see it in certain decks. Oh man, check this guy out, the Dominus. So this is five, a hybrid blue-red mana for a creature, spirit, avatar, it's a 4-4 with flying. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may gain control of target permanent until end of turn. If you do, untap it, it gains haste until end of turn. Nothing is truly your own. It is his, whether you know it or not. This guy's the MTG version of Jeff Bezos, dude. It's pretty spicy, too. My friends hate this thing, especially if I can flash it in somehow. It always eats removal. Not a bad stat line for the abilities, dude. And if you can untap with this, you're getting the best thing on the battlefield. That says permanent, brother. Clout of the Dominus. It's one hybrid blue-red mana for an enchantment or enchant creature. As long as it's blue, it gets plus one, plus one, and has shroud, dude. As long as it's red, it gets plus one, plus one, and has a haste. Oh my god, this little murloc found a one mana lightning greaves in the lake, and now he gets all the ladies because he's all pumped up, dude. He's getting plus two, plus two. Pretty sweet enchantment for one mana. Very efficient. And you got the Deus of Calamity, five hybrid red green for a creature spirit avatar. It's a six six with tramp stamps. Whenever this guy deals six or more damage to an opponent, destroy target land that player controls. He bears the mark of ages upon his skin. Yeah, memories of dreams long dead and best left buried. This guy scoffs at the social contract. He's a dang lawyer, dude. This guy can blast in a deck that doubles power and starts landscaping your opponents, dude. I'm looking at you, Xenagos. And he's got the old runes of the Deus. It's four and a hybrid red green for an enchantment or enchant creature. As long as it's red, it gets plus one plus one, has a double strike, dude. As long as it's green, it gets plus one plus one, has trample. Now, five mana is a lot. I'm not sure if this is worth it, but it is a big buff if you target a bigger creature, dude. Double strike and trample are two of the best abilities to have in this game, brother. Then we've got the Nobilis of War, dude. He's five hybrid Boros mana for a creature spirit avatar. It's a three, four with flying. Attacking creatures you control get plus two, plus oh. A great siege is a banquet to him. A long and terrible battle. The most exquisite delicacy. And last and probably least is a decent anthem on a three, four flying body. This guy is a bit overcosted, but I like the fact that he's got two ginger goats. And then we got the old Scourge of the Nobilis. Two and a hybrid red-white for an enchantment or enchant creature. As long as it's red, it gets plus one, plus one. and has a little fire-breathing effect for a red-white mana. As long as it's white, it gets plus one, plus one. and has a lifelink, dude. Fire-breathing and lifelink can be really gross, but this is kind of mediocre. I like that the goblin gets to have a little fun and kick off a California wildflyer just playing with his whips in the woods, dude. Anyways, man, I was interested in taking a walk down memory lane today and taking a look at these sweet cycles through the lens of a modern commander player. The lore, the rich lore, it's like eating a piece of delicious cake that was baked by Dobby from Harry Potter. Yeah, listen, he's enslaved by a heartless monster, but he puts his all into those cakes, dude. 
Some of these sets these days don't feel like you're eating cake, dude. They feel like you're eating generic Piggly Wiggly brand Oreos. They don't even come up with a clever take on the name Oreos. They just call them cookie sandwiches. You know, there's no love, there's no flavor, there's just empty calories there. It's baked by a machine dude stamped by the cold metal press of a Terminator. Don't get me wrong, there are some modern sets that are so good, dude. Last year's Baldur's Gate set was way overpriced, and that kind of tainted it a little bit, but the flavor was spot on, dude. I love the commanders, I love everything about that set. You could tell that there was a lot of care and love in that set. Anyways, thanks for walking down memory lane with me, dude, down the misty back alleys of Lorwyn and Shadowmoor. Sneaky G from Better Commander, signing off.